the coronation. So getting down to the festival, the whole celebration, the coronation. So, you know, I watched the highlights of it online. And, you know, what struck me first of all was the music. The music. They had like, they said they hired something like a thousand musicians. Musicians everywhere. Trumpets heralding in the advent of the king, you know. You know, it was just trumpets of galore, tr trumpets of blazing, fucking marching bands, wind chimes, and choirs. Oh, yeah. Singing and shit. Really spellbinding. And actually, it sounded quite good, is what struck me about it. It was how powerful it was. It was just like, think of the most epic like choir classical music like you would you would see in like a film it was like i was watching like gladiator or something you know it was like great music you know and um you know they begin with the declarations they had like this bishop he was like a deaf man or something for a deaf guy he spoke pretty good he had like hearing aids he was like some bishop or arch Bishop or Sir Bishop of whatever the fuck. Cirrhosis of liver. I don't know what he was. Some duke or some shit. Or bishop or something. Yeah, he was like a clergyman of some sort. He was like... He was like doing the oaths. Right? So and then there's Charles. He's on his knees in front of the bishop. The bishop or whatever the fuck. The clergyman. He's just like... Sir Charles, do you swear... To uphold the British Empire and all your doings? Do you swear to uh, uphold the Protestant religion? Do you swear to bring justice and mercy to all realms of Christ's earth? Do you swear? And then, like, Charles is like, All this I swear. Yes, I swear. Undubitably, I swear. A lot of Mickey Mouse questions as if he's not going to say yes, you know? King Charles, do you swear to be a good king, to be a good boy? Do you swear? All of this, I swear. Yes, I swear. It's like, why don't you tell the truth for a change? King to be P Prince Charles, do you swear that you did not murder your wife, Princess Diana? Did you murder Princess Diana? No, I swear I did not. You know what I mean? Like, why don't you ask him a real question? That's what I was thinking, right? Anyways, this clergyman, he's given the king his oaths. Passed it with flying colors, you know. All this I swear. So apparently, you know, he swears that he's going to be a good boy. So, you know, they did the oaths and the declarations. And, um, you know. You know, a lot, of, a lot of weird things did happen as well during that. Um, first of all, um, you know, he had his hand. Whoa, whoopsie doodle. He had his hands on the Bible, right? And uh, looking at those mitts, right? I was looking at the mitts of that king to be. I was like, you know, he's got some, you know, you thought he would have some spindly, spindly little bitch hands, you know, at being like a, a royal blue blooded bitch, you know, like uh, you would figure, right? But I was looking at him. He's like, he had some sausage fingers. He had some mitts on him, some mitts. I was like, yo, man, he looks like a mechanic. Big old hands on the Bible. Then, you know, you got King Charles, you know, he, as he's doing his declarations, all of this I swear. He like, he could have been like a motorcycle mechanic. You know, the, you know, I hear a motorcycle outside. I've just seen those big sausage fingers of his on the Bible. Then he kisses the Bible. He literally puckered up and kissed the Bible with 
So, you know, I guess it was kind of touching because, you know, I am a Christian myself. I'm a believer. And I guess it was pretty moving. You know, he's kissing the Bible with those big ass sausage fingers of his. And, you know, it's all good. Um, then, you know, what else? Oh, yeah. So after he kisses the Bible and does his declarations, all of this he swears. Big ol' all of this he swears. You know, um, then they had like a, like a, like a minstrel show or like a, I don't know, like a, like a Negro choir. Cause like up until this point, there were just all these like British, like little boys and stuff, like British boys and old men. And they're like, like singing their fucking hymns and shit and up until that point and all of a sudden after the declarations and the oaths there was like this negro minstrel show or this negro choir and they started and they're singing and they're jiving and you know it was like and they're all dressed in white i mean kind of annoyed me because it's like everything else was so solemn right everything else was like so solemn and so um like befitting of a king then you get this negro minstrel show and they're just like <laughs> like doing this jive dancing and shit right it's like I guess I was a little offended as a black man because I'm just like, oh, knock it off. Like, why is it, you know, it's like, you know, they, they were really trying to put a point of, um, you know, oh, we, we jiving and we're doing all, that's how black folk get down and they're singing and dancing and oh, like, give it a break, you know, it gets on your nerves after a while. You know what I mean? It's like. I, I don't relate to that. Like, why is why is a jive thing supposed to be like a black thing? Like, I don't relate to that. You know what I mean? It's like, I would have related it... I would have related better if had, during that little Negro minstrel choir show, um, like, had they had, like, Russell Brand come flying in, dressed up as the queen from Alice in Wonderland, shouting, OFF WITH HIS HEAD! OFF WITH HIS HEAD! Like, I would have related more to that than, hey, Jive turkey motherfucker! Like, some black people singing, like... Found it highly offensive as a black man, to be honest with you. But, um... But then again, one thing that they kept on trying to emphasize, and obviously... This whole thing was approved by the British Empire. I mean, you're not just going to go in there and do whatever the hell you want at the king's coronation, I'm guessing. Um, so all of this was pre-approved. And they're trying to make it seem as if it's a new era for the monarchy. All are included. You had like all these black and Indian and Chinese archbishops and delegates and blah, 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 flitting around handling the crown, moving this, moving that around, you know, so it was like a new era they're trying to emphasize, I guess. I don't know. Made me a little bit uncomfortable. Quick sip of tea balls. Don't mind me balls. Quick tea break. You know. So after the Negro minstrel show or the choir minstrel choir, after that, um, I guess um, the king got marinated. So, you know, they just rubbed him down with some holy oils and holy water and stuff. And they gave him like a, I guess they put up like some, some dividers. And they got him back there and they oiled him down a bit, greased him up a bit. Kind of like um, his brother Prince Andrew did on like uh, Epstein Island. Like... Prince Andrew, apparently, as I mentioned before, apparently, allegedly, he was getting some, you know, he was diddling some kids or some young women on Epstein Island. So, you know, and he'd have the girls, the young girls, allegedly, oil him down and massage him. So very much like that, during the coronation, the king, he gets like, um, 
anointed with holy oils and holy water and stuff and you know so on and on and so forth with the coronation and um after which after the oiling um the king received his christ orb orb christ orb or the orb so then um you know the that deaf clergyman that i told you about earlier he, prince charles do you accept the king's orb the christ orb is like an orb with like a crucifix on the top of it it's like a little uh, orb with a crucifix popping off the top and what it represents is um christ's dominance over the cosmos the orb represents the cosmos and the cross represents christ's dominion over the cosmos really tugs on the old heartstrings you know what i mean so um charles do you receive this orb this christ orb i receive it so then he takes it right then um oh yeah then 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 the next thing is um he starts to receive like um like a like housewares like a kitchen dinette set like they just start bringing in all this like kitchen dinette tables and you know they got all this cutlery and plates and like a spinning jenny and like all these like utensils and shit he's just i don't know he just it was like he was moving in i guess he was moving well no i guess didn't he doesn't he already live at buckingham palace as the prince but I don't know, whatever. He's getting all these, like, dinette table chairs and bowls and cutlery and shit. He's just getting all this stuff. I don't really, I don't really know what it represented, but he's just getting all this stuff. Then, um, then, um, he receives two scepters. One scepter is the scepter of power. And the other scepter is the scepter of mercy. And the scepter of power, he has to wear with a glove. You know, they give him like a glove to wear over his hand as he's holding the scepter of power. That's to remind him to be merciful with that power. So he's got a scepter and his uh, scepter of power and a scepter of mercy. Charles, do you accept? the scepter of mercy charles do you accept the scepter of power yes i accept them so then he takes them then um we go into the crowning now this was talked about widely widely covered it's a bit of a fumble if you notice that archbishop or that bishop or whatever that guy I was telling you about the bishop he goes to like put the crown on king charles right and he's going to put the crown and apparently he like he missed a little bit of a miss and it, you know and it was a bit of a fumble and then you know then he, he puts it on and he's he's looking at it you know lining it up and caught on those big dumbo ears of his no doubt. I mean, he probably just caught it on those Dumbo ears, you know. You know, try putting a fucking crown on somebody's head with those big old Dumbo ears, like, popping out. I mean, you'd fumble too, right? So, humorous little moment. Some people were talking about it, you know. Then they turned to the crowd. And they encourage the crowd. Okay, we now encourage you to look at your notebook or your pamphlet that's in front of you and repeat after us. God save the king. God save King Charles. We declare our faith and our allegiance to King Charles. You know, getting the crowd all amped up to, I don't know, go to war or, you know, plunder and take over some nation in the name of King Charles or some shit? Do you swear your allegiance to King Charles? I swear my allegiance! And then 
pledging their allegiance to this guy. Then, oh yeah, then then everyone starts singing, and it's like a you know, it's like a singing moment, and people are like you know, King Charles gets up to go for his kingly walk or whatever, King Charles, and everybody's singing. But then the camera pans to um, Prince William, and you know, and he he has his sheet music in front of him. He's oh save the king, Abel. He was faking it. I was, I was looking at him. I was like, hey, wait a minute. He's faking it. He's not singing. He's lip syncing. You know, they had like Prince William singing and he was pretending, boy. I'm not no dummy. Come on. I wasn't born yesterday. That's a lip sync if I ever seen one. You know, he's just like. You know, <laughs> obviously wasn't singing. But I mean, whatever. If that's his only faux pas. Compared to his relatives, <laughs> I'll give him a pass. But he was faking it, that Prince William. He wasn't singing. It was just like. And everybody else is like, Go, baby boy, hey, God save the king. Yeah, and Prince Harry was somewhere in the building, too. I mean, they didn't quite. I don't know. I saw a glimpse of him. For a moment, and then he scampered off somewhere, and, you know, when you really think about it, their whole family business is so in the news, so much of it is twisted bullshit. I mean, how the hell do we know if any of it's true, what people say? And, um, you know, his whole fucking life is basically in the news, Prince Harry. Even all the royals will cut him some slack there. And uh, it's really strange, because, you know, apparently he just, like, dissed his whole family in that audio book he recently released or the book he biography autobiography that he recently released called spare whatever that means i mean maybe he's a bowler whatever the fuck that means spare i didn't know prince harry bowled but anyways um he releases this autobiography called spare apparently he just gets into it about the royal family I was going to get it on audiobook to listen to, but it's like 18 hours long or some shit. I'm like, I ain't listening to this guy bang on and whinge on for 18 hours. You know what I mean? Abada, abada, my name's Prince Harry. Hey there, governor. My name's Prince Harry. Here, here's an old joke that I made up about, like, five years ago. If you think my name is Harry, then you've never tasted... Black Pussy! <laughs> My name's Prince Harry! <laughs> that was a little joke I made up, you know? If you think my name's Harry, then you've never tasted Black Pussy! <laughs> God love him, you know what I mean? That Meghan Markle. I don't know. Why couldn't he just get himself an old-fashioned English lass? You know what I mean? Think of all the pain and humiliation degradation that he could have avoided had he just shacked up with some nice British lass. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'd go traipsing around with some biracial American crackpot like fucking Meghan Markle. Hey, a woman stands by her man, does she not? And, um, I don't know why she couldn't have just made that work. I mean, you're not going to go into the British Empire and tear it down because you're a black woman with some sass and you got some shit to say and you're friends with Oprah and da, da, da. You knew what you were getting. You knew what you were getting into. You, you're dicking around with a fucking royal. The royal family. So if you're going to be in, be all in. God save the queen. God bless Britain or whatever the fuck, right? You got to be raw, raw, raw. You're not going to go in there and have your own agenda and expect an empire to bow to you. You know what I mean? And my whole thing is like, just from the black perspective, I don't want nobody to love me that don't want to love me. If the king and queen want to hate my black ass because I'm black, God save the queen. God save the king. I don't care. Go on, do your thing. It has nothing to do with me. That's your soul. 
So, like, whatever. You know what I mean? She's up in there. They treated me racist. Like, they were mean to me. They did this. They did that. It's just like, how much of that is just not your perceived perception and the fact that you thought you might have got some special treatment from an empire? Bet you if she just went in there like a cheerleader and stood by her man and stood by the British people, then they would have loved her for it. She could have been like the... Diana 2.0. Dee Dee. <laughs> or whatever the fuck they want to call her. Right? But no, she went in there and she cried victim and it disgusted a lot of people. I really don't know though. But hey, that's just my opinion. Who knows? Because that's the thing about the royals. There's a lot of misinformation. And I don't even like that term, misinformation. It's just... There's good information and there's bad information. You gotta sift through it and think for yourself and read for yourself and educate yourself. Come to your own conclusions. It's kind of hard to know because it's like, unless you literally know these people, how can you really know for certain? So, I mean, I don't know. And as you know... As the coronation's winding down and, you know, now he's got his crown on, he's got his scepters, you know, everybody's singing, Prince William's lip syncing, Prince Harry, he's somewhere else in the building, you know, the, the commentator is like, King Charles, finally crowned king, a moment he trained his whole life I'm like, really? He trained his whole life for this moment? I mean, I picked it up pretty quickly. I mean, no offense. I mean, as I mentioned, I gave you guys a recap. Gave a couple declarations, couple oaths. All this, I swear. Then they gave him a kitchen dinette set, bowls, spoons, fucking plates, scepters, Gloves, you know, they gave him all this shit. He's just juggling it in his hand. Do you swear to be the king of England, to uphold the Protestant values, to rule with mercy, to uphold Christ's love within your kingdom realm? All this I swear. Do you accept this salad bowl? Yes, I accept the salad bowl and all the other trinkets they gave him. We're going to put a crown on your head. It got caught on those big Dumbo ears of his and woo. We now declare you King of England. All hail the King. A moment he waited for his whole life. It's like, I picked it up pretty quickly. I could have done all that shit, no problem. I could have done that blindfolded. You know? Peekaboo. I could have done it, no fucking problem. He trained his whole life for it. And, interestingly enough, he was getting some flack as well. All the declarations and the oaths, a lot of them, he just had to read off a paper. He's just like, Yes, um, I swear to, um, uphold all the laws and governance of the realm of Britannia, and I swear to, um, oh yeah, be merciful to the people, and da da da. Didn't even have it memorized wasn't exactly a good look but then again he was reading from like a a scripture or a book or something i mean aesthetically it looked okay but you do notice that he didn't memorize it but i mean for the camera it did look okay they had like an official book that he read out of and blah 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 i don't know oh yeah and then um after all that they get whisked away back to buckingham palace and um, in a stagecoach and a golden horse and buggy, which the commenter goes, there they go in the royal carriage, notoriously uncomfortable. What a martyr. Oh, the poor king whisked away in the notoriously uncomfortable horse and buggy. Oh, how does he do it? <laughs> So, 
you know, it's kind of comical. They're really trying to make it seem as if, like, you know, well, here's the thing. They try to overplay the sacrifice. Oh, he does serve, and he serves the people, and he gives so much of his life. And his life is one devoted to service. I'm King Charles, and I have declared that I'm going to give my life over to service. And to be a... Try to overplay it as if he's not like a billionaire. Fucking poor little rich boy. King of England. But on the other hand, it's like every waking moment of this man's life is as a representative of the British Empire. He was literally born in Buckingham Palace. You know what I mean? Um, allegedly, that's what I saw on Wikipedia. Make sure to donate. <coughs> what I saw on Wikipedia, it's like King Charles. He was literally born in Buckingham Palace. He's... Every moment of his life is representing the monarchy. And imagine how, like, how many of those type of... He's literally been to hundreds of those type of ceremonies. Some big, officious thing with documents and robes and decorum and speeches and blah, 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 blah. That's his life. And it does add value, as I mentioned... It's like to be a citizen of an empire holds global clout. You know, if you're a citizen of a country that is wealthy, you are deemed more valuable than being a citizen of a country that is unwealthy or unpowerful. So... You can't discount the value, though you do question the validity. Some people do anyways, right? After the coronation, you know, they go back to Buckingham Palace and, Oh, hi to my loyal subjects. And he's waving from the balcony terrace. Does that for a bit. Congratulations to King Charles III. All this I swear, as your king, I will endeavor to rule with love and mercy and understanding. And I'm going to get plastic surgery to finally pin down these elephantite ears of mine. All this I swear. You know, God save the king. Um, as I mentioned, there's um, a lot to question and be hesitant about in terms of the monarchy and the royal family. But then again, they really emphasized, in the coronation as well, they really emphasized the religious aspect, the Christ aspect, which I, which I fully support. So, I hope, the hope is that these Christian values, at the very least, do unto others as you will have done unto you, the Christ love. Hopefully that stays forefront in the monarchy and in the royal family. And, um, you know... Everything else is up to the test of time. God save the king. And a bus just parked outside my apartment, if you heard that. God save the king.